with Eileen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Life and Curly Cues podcast with me, Eileen. Welcome to episode 23, everybody. Um, I feel like it's been a while since I've actually recorded anything, touched any of this equipment or anything like that, because the last episode you listened to, I record, I recorded before the new year, and this is technically the first episode I'm recording this year, and so yeah, it feels a little weird, um, because it's been like a month since I've touched um, any of this equipment, and so yeah, just hopping right into it. Um, this episode there is no guest because I wanted to talk about um, some updates that I'm doing and also my recent travel that I went on. Um, so let's just go right into it. Um, how are y'all doing? How's that new year treating you? I can't even talk. How's the new year been so far? We're only like, what, a month? Almost a month in? It's not even the end of January yet. Um, what what have you done to start off your new year? Um Yeah. What have you been up to so far? Did you set any resolutions? I didn't set any resolutions for sure. Um, I don't do those things because I know I can't hold myself accountable for them. So I don't do resolutions. Um, But I did rather than resolutions. I actually have done something in these first couple of weeks of the year. I've kind of furthered my education on things. I am um, and I'll kind of explain how I what I mean by that now, (laughs) I guess. Um, So I am a part of a group on Facebook called Girls Love Travel. Um, And with that group, I have been given so much inspiration for traveling more. Um, I've been able to like ask people for advice on this last trip that I went on. And it's opened up a lot of different ideas and opportunities for me. And one of those opportunities that I was able to receive based off of being a part of this group is that the founder um, did a collaboration with the Institute of Code and they offered a free class seven day challenge on how to code. And so creating a code for like your webs for to be able to make a website in the future and all that. And they also offered a seven day challenge um, for your Instagram. And so I jumped on that opportunity right away because it was free for the first thousand people who signed up. And I saw the post, I signed up, got the email, I was confirmed to start. And so these this past week, we're at the tail end of this challenge, of both of these challenges. This past week, I have been learning uh, crash courses on how to code, which has been really cool. Um, the last time I coded anything was when I was in high school, and that was a very long time ago. <laughs> and so it's been nice to go back back into that type of thing. I knew what coding was and I just hadn't done it since high school. And so it was a nice, it's a nice opportunity to kind of learn. And also I do want to eventually have a website of my own with all of my own content because I do have, um, content. Like I, when I go travel and go to places, I love to take pictures of every, of the nature and landscape and everything. And so I have, I think beautiful pictures, um, that I want to kind of have somewhere and so I want to be able to create a website in the future and this is me learning how to do that and so I want to be able to have a place where I can put that content and other things as well and so yeah I'm this weekend I've been catching up and so I um, am currently on like I think day six or day five of the challenge and they're about to post day seven soon Um, but yeah, so I've been doing that and that's been fun. Um, and it's just like video seminars and doing it all online because Institute of Code is based out of Bali. And so Tina, the founder has been so awesome at providing all the resources we need for this course. Um, they created their own Facebook group for us to be able to ask questions and all that. And I love it. And then, that's just the coding course. I'm also, as I said, taking an Instagram course. 
And with this Instagram course, I have been, if you've noticed on my Instagram, I have not posted since the new, since new year. Um, and I didn't intentionally mean to do this, but I haven't posted since this, oh my gosh, I can't talk. I haven't posted since the new year and this course kind of came in and I started doing it and then I realized like I'm glad I haven't posted in the new year because I can take everything I've learned from this course and essentially start new as far as managing my Instagram account for um, this for 2020 and beyond and so with this Instagram course I've been learning um, how the algorithm works English how the algorithm works um best ways to like reach my target audience or be able to establish myself as a quote unquote brand and try to bring in more people because I've had this Instagram account for almost two years already and I haven't really or maybe I have two years no yeah almost two years and I haven't grown um I haven't really grown I've kind of been stagnant at where I am and so this course is helping me kind of figure out more about what I want to do with my Instagram and also it's making me think about things I never thought about when I first started my Instagram my business account or yeah you know my creating with content whatever my curly headed cutie Eileen account yeah that's what I'm trying to say (laughs) and so I've been thinking a lot about different things again that I've never would have thought of I'm learning about the techniques on how to work with the algorithm algorithm. I cannot English today. Wow. I have been learning about, um, just recent, last night I did, um, day six of the challenge and we learned about hashtags and how to use those to your advantage and the best ways to really use hashtags. Um, and so, yeah, I've just been, if you ever have the opportunity to take like a crash course in anything that can help build your brand or help grow what you're doing, go for it. Like take advantage of that because I thought I knew what I knew and turns out I didn't. And this is what's so awesome about that and a great way for me to start off the year because I'm essentially learning how to make a website. I'm learning how to um, upgrade my Instagram, so to see, so to speak. Wow. Really can't talk today. And it's just been, it's, I can't go over it enough. Like it's been great. Um, and I'm doing everything on, on my computer, on my own time. Um, and it's, it's been nice. Like I get why people are like, Oh, working like from home is great and all that stuff. Or like being like working with technology is so easy to work around because it's on your own time. And I see that. I like it. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so that's an update on what I've been doing recently. I've kind of, I haven't really been posting anything except on my stories because I have been wanting to kind of figure everything out before I start new. And, l- and now I have an idea of what I want to start doing and so I can start planning and then soon there'll be more posts coming and I'll have more consistency with my brand but with my account or with my brand it's always quality over quantity so I never um I this is something I discovered um doing this course is that in the beginning when I started this um my account I wanted to like post every day or I wanted to post as much as possible and then I ran out of content and I was like oh shit like what do I do now and this course has taught me like it's it really is about quality um and over like quantity you want to make sure you love what you're posting so that your followers can love what you're posting and that's what I've been learning and that's what I'm thinking about doing and I I see good things happening in the future with my account and I'm excited for it and I just huge shout out to Institute of Code and to Girls Love Travel for like making this happen um and if you don't know what those things are like definitely look them up um I'll leave their um their links in the description so you can look and research what they do but it's pretty cool I had never heard 
I think I had heard of Institute of Code a little bit before this challenge, these challenges, but I never fully dove into like what they were, what they did. Um, and then thanks to Girls Love Travel posting about it, I was able to kind of learn more and I love what they do and it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's been an update on me and my journey into adulting. Um, but the main reason I wanted to f- record this episode um, by myself and everything was because I want to talk about my recent, I guess you could say vacation, my recent trip that I took um, because it was a lot of fun and it was a lot of uh, self-discovery and it was a lot of just me time and fun and all that stuff. And I n- did film content <laughs> while I was on it. But as if you follow me on any of my platforms, and if you notice, um, I still have not posted a San Francisco vlog, of which I went to San Francisco in July of this past year. Um, So knowing how I am on that track record, I can't even talk, on that track record, I wanted to talk about my recent trip because the vlog for that, for this recent trip will most likely not be going up until like mid-year maybe. I'm really going to try to have it come out sooner, but knowing me and my lazy self, it most likely will be later. So that's why I wanted to make a podcast talking about it so that it's still pretty relevant and um, I can get all the thoughts off my brain because I did film already like snippets of me reflecting and stuff for the vlog. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just make an episode about talking about my trip and what I've learned and, 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 okay, Eileen, come on. (laughs) I did ask on my Instagram stories, um, if anybody had any questions about my trip or anything like that. So I will also be answering some of those questions that people, um, did send in, uh, or that they did reply to my stories about my trip. So yeah, let's just go ahead and, uh, get into it. Why don't we? So, I went recently, and by recently, I mean at the end of 2019, I took a trip, and I took a birthday trip, and I kind of talked about this in a few episodes beforehand or not, that I was, like, planning a trip, and I was going, and all that, Um, but yeah, so I planned a birthday trip. My birthday is at the end of the year, and so I planned a trip where I was going to go somewhere for my birthday, and I was going to celebrate my birthday and ring in the new year in a different place. And I did it. I made it happen. I saved my money. I booked my flights like back in October and I was ready to go. I made somewhat not really of a plan before I left hand, left um, Texas and I kind of just went with the flow. And this is my first ever, or this was, this is whatever, um, solo trip. I completely did this all by myself. I wanted to see if I could do it. I before going on this trip, I, or I guess what I'm trying to say is, I don't know what I'm trying to say, to be honest. (laughs) Um, I am always, I realized this before going on my trip, I am very dependent on doing things with other people. I never really want to do anything like alone, even like a simple shopping trip. I'm just like, who wants to go shopping with me I'll like text people and be like what are you doing you want to come with me and just do this and I'm always very dependent on wanting to do stuff with other people and I never really like doing things by myself and I wanted to challenge myself on a solo trip and why not do it when I have off right I don't know um but yeah and I work at a I work at a school so our it's really hard it's not practical to take vacations like in the middle of the year or in random months um because it's the school year and so it's perfect that my birthday falls during a holiday break from school because I have guaranteed two weeks off to do anything and why not schedule a trip on that on those two weeks off I mean I wasn't gone for two weeks but I was gone for like 10 days so yeah, why not schedule it? And so yeah, so I wanted to challenge myself. Wow, I went off on a tangent there. Sorry, guys. Um, I wanted to challenge myself and see how I would be in a solo traveling situation. 
And you know, why not just make it even more challenging and go out of the country for it? <laughs> why not? Um, yeah, so I went to Calgary, which is in Alberta, Canada, which is kind of more on the like west side of Canada. If you're looking at it, I don't know, find a map, you'll see it. You can search it up. You have a smartphone. And the reason I chose Calgary was because the prior year, de- um, December of 2018, I follow um, the Bucket List family and I also follow Simply Nail Logical on YouTube. And in 2018, both of them went to Banff, which is, excuse me which is another town in Alberta and it's a town that's on about like an hour and a half to two hours away from Calgary and they had went and I watched their videos and I was in complete awe of how beautiful it was how beautiful it looked I mean it could have been their editing skills but also just it was beautiful I did research I looked it up after watching their videos and I was just completely in awe and I was like that is a bucket list location I want to go to. I want to go there one day. And that's it. That's all I said after watching those videos. And then come last year and last summer, I started thinking about what I wanted to do for my birthday. And if you follow me, you know that in my birthday in 2018, I took a weekend trip to New Orleans with Jasenia, um, who's been on my podcast multiple times. I went to New Orleans with her and we just hung out for the weekend. We explored New Orleans. We did all that. And so from that trip to New Orleans and being inspired by so many different travel things that I had been seeing lately, I wanted to, I decided I wanted to do something for my birthday. I wanted to start a new tradition. I wanted to start a tradition where for my birthday every year I go somewhere. I go somewhere new and I celebrate. And originally I wanted it to be kind of a tradition that I do by myself. And that now thinking about it, I think it's just a tradition I just want to do. I just want for my birthday to be somewhere, whether it be I'm alone or with somebody else. I mean, alone is great. And I'll tell you why being alone is great. Um, or celebrating it with somebody else. But yeah, I decided I wanted to do this tradition. And so during the summer, I started thinking all the different places I could go to. I had a list. I was like, I could do a road trip to the Grand Canyon and the Hoover Dam and like come back. I could go to Hawaii. I could go to Central America. I could go to South America. I could go overseas I could go wherever and so I started making a list and I started looking up prices and all that and every time I would think of one place I would the next thing I would think about would be Banff I would then I'd be like nah and then I'd go think of something else and then I'd be I'd always come back to Banff no matter what I would come back to Calgary and to Banff and so with that by October I had decided I keep coming back to Banff no matter what other places I look for. I'm going to take that as a sign that I'm going to Calgary for my birthday this year. And so I looked it up. I looked up prices. I looked up different things to do. I, um, I, what's it called? Um, what's the word? What's the word guys? I, uh, tracked flights with Hopper and with Skyscanner and I, kept getting notifications what prices they were going flying out of San Antonio which man flying out of San Antonio really makes things difficult when you want to go international that's not Mexico and so yeah I would go back to Banff I chose Banff well I chose Calgary because of Banff and I October came and I booked my flights that and it happened and then I from that from booking my flights because I had been saving up money because I knew I wanted to do something. So I booked my flights, which were pretty decently priced. I booked them using Expedia.com. Yeah. I booked my flights using Expedia and it was super easy, super easy. So I, I meant super easy, super quick. That's what I meant to say. (laughs) Um, I just really cannot talk today, y'all. 
And so after booking my flight, I realized like I needed to book a hotel and I wanted to um, rent a car because I wanted to stay in Calgary while I was there, but I wanted to be able to drive into Banff to be able to do Banff things and visit my number one thing I really wanted to do. And the whole reason I was attracted to this place and I just wanted to go on my birthday was so that I could go ice skating on Lake Louise. Y'all, it happened. We'll get there. But that is my main reason. So I knew I needed to rent a car because of all of that, which is what led me into what I talked about a couple episodes ago about getting a credit card. And so I got a credit card for the purposes of being able to rent a hotel and rent a car. And I did that. I did some adulting while planning this solo trip. And yeah, so I had everything set. Everything was ready. Come December 26th, right after Christmas, I left for my birthday trip. I was gone from December 26th all the way up, or at least in Canada, up till January 2nd. So I did spend my birthday and I did spend New Year's there. Um, And then after Canada, I flew to Atlanta for that final weekend before I had to go back to work on January 6th. And so, yeah, um, my trip got kind of off on the rocky start, which was a little worrisome. Um, But as I was on my way to the airport, I got a text message saying that my flight had been delayed, um, which is something you never really want to hear when you're trying to go on a vacation and celebrate something fun. Uh, So we stopped um, so my parents could eat or so my family could eat while I waited for this delay. And while we're waiting, like, I just was so antsy. I just couldn't focus on anything else. I just kept refreshing my page because I was essentially, with this new delay, supposed to be landing as my connecting flight is essentially leaving. And, you know, no one ever wants to think about that. No one ever wants to think about that. And it sucks for the people that do end up having to like miss a flight or anything but I (sighs) had something that like stresses me out a lot when traveling so the delay happens I make it through I finally get to the airport I make it to TSA which was super fast because the terminal that I was flying out of in San Antonio only has two airlines so it's always pretty much empty (laughs) um And I get to the counter and I go up to the guy and I'm like, hey, uh, I need to figure out what's happening because right now it says that I'm not going to make it to my connecting flight. Um, And that's also the last flight of the day going to where I'm going. So I kind of need your help as to figure out what I'm going to do here. And he looked it up and he was like, oh, yeah, you're not going to make it. And I was like, ugh, that's exactly what somebody wants to hear when they're trying to go on vacation. He managed to move me up to the first available seat that was closer to the front of the plane because I was sitting towards the back end of the plane. So he was like, if I move you upward, up, wow, I can't talk. If I move you up, then um, you can get off the plane faster and try to get to your next flight faster. And I was like, okay, that works. And as we were talking, um, our landing time moved up some. And so he was like, okay, well now we're landing at this time. So you'll have 20 minutes to get to your next gate, which means you'll make it because uh, we get off at the gate right next to the train. And then you just take the train and then you just got to go to your next gate. And I was like, okay. So I felt a little bit better about that. I get on the plane. It's from, it's from San Antonio to Houston. So it's only a 45 minute flight. Get on the plane doing great. I keep checking the time. I'm like, is my other flight delayed? Like, are we going to make it? What's happening? Um, I get off the plane and I'm booking it. As I get off the plane, I have the urge to pee, but I have no time to pee. So I am rushing with a full bladder to my next gate, making sure I get it. As I board the train to move terminals, I get a notification. I can't talk. I get a notif- Oh my gosh. I get a notification saying that my next flight had begun boarding and I was like fudge (laughs) and so I finally make it to the gate I still need to pee so bad and I make it to where they finish calling the boarding group right before mine so I get there as, as soon as it's time for me to start boarding I make it on the plane. We're good. We're dandy. I sit down. No one's in my row yet. I still have to pee but 
all these people coming up and down the aisle way, there's no way in hell that I'm going to like disrupt all that organization currently so I waited until like everybody was on the plane and then I had to tell these sweet people next to me like I'm so sorry but I just came from another plane and I was booking it and did not have time to go can you please let me go use stand up so I can go use the restroom and they let me go and I finally as soon as I like came back to my chair I was just like stress relieved I didn't have to pee anymore I was finally on the plane heading to Canada like everything was great I was nice and at ease and then we start landing in Canada and I look out my window and I can see the snow everywhere and I just feel so happy. Um, yeah, a lot. Yeah, I just feel very, very happy. Um, a lot of people were skeptical before I left about going by myself and doing all that. But as soon as I saw it, I wasn't scared. I was more excited about all the stuff I was about to do and experience. I make it through customs and all that. Um, I rented my car with Enterprise, which was super easy. As soon as I got to the counter, like my price that they told my quote originally was the same price I had to pay. So I already knew ahead of time. Um, I was worried about um, the snow and the ice and driving, but they the rental came with like the ice scraper. So I was at ease once I saw that in the car. And then of course, like ugh, it just worked out perfectly. My rental car was a Honda Elantra, which is a car my family has had in the past and I have driven many a times. And so I was very comfortable with the car I got. So I was, everything was like working itself out and it was making me feel so much better about my trip, especially after dealing with all the stress of having a delayed flight trying to get there. And I get to the hotel. Um, I stayed at Best West at a Best Western Suites downtown, which is a great location. If you can stay downtown anywhere, like I would totally recommend it because you're so you're walking distance to everything downtown. Um, so you don't have to like I I essentially didn't have to rent a car, but because I was planning excursions uh, like an hour and a half out of the city, I wanted a car so that I could go at my own leisure and didn't have to like go on a bus or anything like that. And the hotel itself, if you had booked through them, you got free parking, which was how they kind of advertised themselves as the only place downtown that has free parking. And it was parking underground, which meant I didn't have to deal with ice on my windshield or anything, which was just so another like sigh of relief that everything was working out. And I just, I was so happy. And I get to the room and you know how sometimes when you're booking a hotel, sometimes you don't necessarily get the exact room you wanted because of um, like you got there way later after check-in. So like everyone else had already been checked in, they got their rooms and you kind of just got left what was left. Um, so I was kind of going in with that mentality, but then I get to my room and it's exactly the room I had booked, which was great. I had a king suite, like it had a little kitchenette, it had a little sofa seating area. Um, I was on the seventh floor, so the view of downtown was just phenomenal in my hotel room. Um, and yeah, I was like ready. I quick, as soon as I got into the room, I like made myself comfortable. I put all my shit everywhere. Um, and I just laid down on the what a comfortable bed that was. Um, I laid down on the bed and I just rested. Um, and luckily I got there on the 26th and my birthday isn't until the 28th. So I gave myself that day after landing to kind of just explore and also figure out what I was going to do because I did only have a plan for my birthday. I didn't have a plan for any of the other days. I had an idea of things I wanted to do, but I didn't know like when I wanted to do them or if I actually wanted to do them. I wanted to leave a lot of open wiggle room as to what I was doing which is a great reason to solo travel because you can plan your own stuff and you go on your own interest like you don't have to worry about like is someone else gonna like this idea of what to do or anything like that so I had a lot of fun with that um yeah so the next day comes I wake up and another great thing about solo travel I can wake up whenever the hell I want which was great I slept in I mean I did have a long travel day or travel evening the night before. So I was just like figuring out what it was. Ooh, also my hotel had free breakfast. So I made sure to wake up every day in time to eat the free breakfast, which was delicious. And then the little breakfast room had a giant window and like a bar overlooking into the street. Um, and it, it was just nice. It was, I 
would come down for breakfast looking a hot mess and then I would just sit in front of the window and let everyone look at my hot mess self and then just eat my delicious breakfast and it was great I had fun thank you um yeah and so I the first day I explored well, before I explored, I kind of put together a plan for what I wanted to do every day. I like made a little note on my phone and I just like put every day down from the 27th through the 1st. And I was like, this is what I can do on these days. And I kind of just went based off of that. After I made that plan, I explored um, the downtown area. I kind of did the touristy downtown stuff. So I walked all the way up to Euclid Park. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. That's how I'm going to say it. Um, which is the park that runs right along the river that runs downtown. And I walked so much. I almost slipped and ate shit all the time in the park because the sidewalks were icy. (laughs) So that was funny. Um, But it was so beautiful and mesmerizing, the walk up to the park. And then a lot of people were scared about me like walking by myself places downtown and all that. But I, I was walking and I felt so comfortable it was, I don't know if it was because it was like daytime or anything like that, but I just felt very comfortable and at ease and I just stayed to myself. Um, I make it to the park and a funny story, which I talked to, I think I posted it some, oh, I think I put it on my like Snapchat. So only my friends saw it, but I was trying to, so as a solo travel, you have your camera and your stuff and tripod. And so you do a lot of like self-timed photos, like on the tripod, move over. So I found a spot in the park along the river that I was like, oh, this would be such a cute like photo of me with the river in the background and all that stuff. So I put my camera on the tripod and I set the timer mode on it and I like press the shutter and then I go to my spot and... (laughs) As I'm trying to get into my spot, I completely eat shit, y'all. I don't even know if anybody was around to see, but I was like walking backwards trying to get into a spot and there was a log that I didn't see because it was covered in snow and I completely just walk backwards into this log and completely fall on my back and my entire backside is covered in snow and the camera's still going because it's on timer mode. And it was on timer mode to take like a series of, I think, five or ten pictures. And I just bust out laughing. And I'm like wiping the snow and then I go to get my camera to look at the pictures. And sure enough, I got a whole like play-by-play of my fall into the snow, which I will be um, mentioning in the vlog whenever the vlog comes out so you can see that. And then I'm most likely going to post the pictures, uh, because it's just too funny to not talk about. And that's real life. Like when you're trying to get a good shot and then nature just gets in your way. Um, and then I was trying to find my phone to post it on my Snapchat and I couldn't find my phone. And I was like, where the hell is my phone? My phone somehow flew out of my pocket and like, farther away from me than it I would have ever thought it did and it was covered in snow and I was like oh shit the first day here and I just fucked up my phone but I didn't my phone did fine I'm very happy it still works to this day um so the snow did not do my phone dirty but it was just funny and from that point I just walked like completely alongside the river and then I walked more downtown. I spent like a f- good few hours. Like last year when I went to New Orleans, I spent, I essentially spent a whole day walking downtown, which is kind of what I did, um, in Calgary. And yeah, that day was just a chill day. I tried my first ever poutine, which, um, that shit is delicious. Like why is that only in Canada? I mean, it's probably in States closer to Canada, but oh my gosh, poutine is just basically cheese fries, but with more cheese on it and freaking delicious. Um, I had it multiple times while I was there because they don't have that here. Or if they do, it's hella expensive. And so I did that my first day and I was ready to explore starting the next day. So the next day, so the next day was my birthday. And so I already had a plan. I woke up I ate breakfast, I got dressed, and I got into the car and I started going on my way. Um, This is a day where I think I was just in complete awe of the beauty that nature provides us. 
which was a great way for me to spend my birthday um, because ever since I started working at this nature-based school that I'm at, I've learned to kind of just love so much more of nature. And on my birthday, I just felt so at peace with the beauty of it all. And I'm driving and to my plan was to go to Lake Louise first because that's the farthest place and then come back down to Banff because Banff is in between Lake Louise and Calgary. And so I drove all the way up to Lake Louise and as you're driving up, you're driving through Banff National Park. So from a from Calgary, you can see the mountain range, the Rocky Mountains in the distance. But then you're driving on the highway and they just keep getting closer and closer and closer until you're finally driving through the park and I just could not stop staring at it. And I there were so many moments where I wanted to just pull out my phone or pull out my camera to just capture it. But I knew for my safety, I couldn't because the the highway was icy, especially as you got into the mountain range. There was ice all over the highway, which was a little scary, but you could see the paths that were created by other cars. So you would just follow those tracks. There were no lanes, nothing. Everyone was kind of just following each other to make sure they don't like skate everywhere. But I just would stare at it. And then as I'm driving, I would get like teary eyed because of how beautiful it is. And I am someone who loves, I love snow, but seeing snow on mountains, I don't know what it is, but it's just something that's so peaceful to me and so mesmerizing that I legit would just stare and get teary eyed of like, holy shit, like this is Mother Earth, like what the fuck, man. And yeah, so I drove through the National Park to get to Lake Louise and then I get to Lake Louise and uh, again, this trip was like, everything was going so perfectly. Um, Driving up to Lake Louise, the traffic was insane. Everybody was trying to get up there. But And parking was pretty hectic. But as I'm pulling up to the first parking lot, it's full. So they're sending everybody up further. But as soon as I get to the first lady who's like telling people, no, it's full, she sees me and then she moves her cone and then lets me in to go park in that parking lot that was supposedly full, but it had just like one car had just left and she let me in. But I was just like, no fucking way. I got parking in the parking lot the public parking lot closest to the lake. Like, how? What? Okay. So I park and I get all my stuff together and I, there's like a little mini hike to get to the lake. I mean, it's like mini, mini, mini hike. It's the smallest hike ever. And I get there and then I'm just like, oh, (laughs) I was speechless. Like, it is insane how amazing it was. Like, I don't, oh my God, I, it's so hard to explain and I can't wait for y'all to see the vlog and the con and the pictures because it's just, it's mesmerizing. And then I get up to the lake and I, I'm just like, I'm just, it just left me speechless and it still leaves me speechless thinking about it. Um, And it was just, again, one of those moments where I just would get teary eyed. I'm like, holy shit, like this is real life. Like I saw this in videos last, the year before I had been doing my research and seeing pictures of it and reading other people's stories about it. But now I'm experiencing it. And I was just like, oh man. So I get there and I get there and it's already like pretty much dinner time. And I was starving because I had not really eaten anything since breakfast. So I eat at the hotel Um, at the Fairmont Chateau, which is like the hotel that essentially is on the lake. And um, I eat the most expensive fried chicken I have ever had in my life and the most expensive monkey bread I've ever had in my life. But it was pretty good. So I can't complain. But I can complain because it was hella expensive. (laughs) And I'm just enjoying myself. And then after I finish eating and sitting at the bar... I go rent my skates and then I go ice skating on Lake Louise and I had an absolute blast. Like it was great. Um, And then it was just, yeah, I just would skate and then not stop staring. And then another moment, um, I ate shit on the, (laughs) I ate shit on the lake too. I tripped over like a crack in the ice because it is a frozen lake. It's what, there's literally water under me. 
Um, so there are natural cracks. And so I skate on the lake or skate either over a crack or a big chunk of ice and I fall on my knees and my right knee like right below it got so bruised from that fall I had to sit down for a little bit and was just like oh gosh this hurts um and then I would I went on skating again and then it was starting to get dark and I knew I still wanted to go to Banff so I finished ice skating got in my car and I drove back down to Banff and in Banff I had decided I wanted to go, I had heard of, or someone recommended to me on the Girls Love Travel page, which thank you so much for commenting all of that, but someone had recommended to me the Upper Hot Springs in Banff, and I was like, hmm, that'd be a nice treat myself, and then when I looked it up, the prices, it was so cheap to do, I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing this, and so what I did was I drove down to Banff, and I parked downtown because the Upper Hot Springs are up the mountain. Um, So I parked downtown because they said that it's easier to take the shuttle up because you don't have to worry about parking since parking is limited up at the top of the mountain. And I was like, oh, yeah. So I parked and then I kind of acted like a local and I got like on their uh, city bus system and I it was only like a dollar like each way. So I took the bus, which I'm so glad I took the bus, y'all, because that drive up the mountain, one, is very dark, two, very icy. I don't know how those buses did it. Um, So I'm glad I did that and I get to the hot springs and I am just enjoying it. It's dark, so I can't see the view of the mountains, but I can still see the snow-capped trees and I was just, ugh, again, in awe and it was so like it was cold walking into the water but as soon as you were in the water it was so warm and so great and it was a great way to end my night as on my birthday and I just had so much fun um and doing like I mean I didn't even do anything I just chilled I just relaxed I just sat soaked it all in I people watched which is something I do um but there were moments which is kind of into myself reflection a uh, portion of this trip there were moments where I wish I sh- could have like opened or I guess spoken to people and kind of just like spark conversation because I feel like I would have had a lot more fun had I done that but I didn't do that um so that's kind of where I'm at on that uh yeah I wish I would have opened up which is something I want a reason why I want to do more of these trips so I can learn to do that because I realized I'm kind of a shy person y'all uh yeah and so that was the end of my birthday I got back to town I walked around for a little bit and then it got really dark and I was like I still have to drive like a whole hour and a half back um so I did and so I got back to my hotel and I there was a Domino's pizza like a block away from my hotel So I ordered pizza, walked to go pick it up, and then I came back to the hotel and my birthday was over eating Domino's pizza in my hotel room in Canada. (laughs) Like, that was it. Uh, So that was pretty fun. And then um, I'm kind of giving you guys like a synopsis, short synopsis of it because I don't want to take too much away from the vlog when it comes up. Uh, But the next day I did, I went to the... Calgary Zoo which is like a I mean they're a pretty famous zoo is what I had heard and I'm very happy I went one because since I'm a member at the San Antonio Zoo I get in for half off at other AZA accredited um, institutions and the Calgary Zoo is one of those institutions so I got into the Calgary Zoo for ten dollars and it was great um, and honestly that zoo is massive I essentially spent the entire day at the zoo and there were so many animals that I you I've never seen in a zoo and so it made me very happy. Like I got to see caribou and I got to see moose and I got to see penguins, which I mean, we have penguins here at SeaWorld, but it's SeaWorld. It's, it's not like a zoo. It's a, I, I mean, SeaWorld is a zoo essentially, but you get what I mean. It's different. <laughs> and so I, there were a lot of different animals. I got to see pandas and that was so, they were so cute. And so just napping and all that. It was great. Um, yeah, I basically spent the whole day at the zoo and I loved it. It was great. Um, the next day was another thing I had actually been, when I was researching, I had found it in someone's comment on the Girls Love Travel page 
about a wolf dog sanctuary. And as soon as I saw that, I like went on their website and I was like, whoa, what is this? And so it's called the Yamnuska, I hope I'm saying that right, Yamnuska Wolf Dog Sanctuary. And it is like 40 minutes away from Calgary. And it is a, like I said, a sanctuary and they receive wolf dogs who have been like illegally bred or they have been turned in by their owners or abandoned and they worked with them. They had about 26, I think, 26 to 30 wolves and like one coyote and they had a bunch of sheep and a donkey and a turkey and chickens and ducks and it was, it was like, it was a farm (laughs) also, but (laughs) I went, well, when I was doing my research, I saw that they, um, they had enrichment activities that you can take part in and they have them going throughout the day. And so I had made a plan where I was going to go, I was going to do a tour, one of the tours. I really wanted to do the tour where you could like actually get in the enclosure with some, with a pack, with one of their packs and like mingle and pet them and love them and all that. But those book out like a month in advance. And I had found out about this too late into it so I booked the the tour below that which is you get you still get to meet well a pack but you don't get to like interact with them um and you kind of just get like a deck view of their enclosure and them and then one thing that I found out once I got there is that in this tour you get to feed them um, and so I got to feed them and that was pretty cool. I mean, feeding them by like chucking the meat into the enclosure for them. But that was still pretty cool, y'all. Um, but yeah, I, so I decided to spend the entire day there because they have enrichment activities going on all day long and you can take part in them. And so when I got there, I got there, I tried to get there as early as possible and I was like, is it cool if I stay And she was like, yeah, we encourage you to. And I was like, awesome. So they had the schedule. And so I like would walk around and everything's outdoors except like the gift shop and the entrance area. So in between enrichment activities, I would come into the thing because it was cold. I would come into the gift shop and just walk around until it was time for the next one. But yeah, I was there from like 1030 to essentially 5 p.m. the entire day just spent with wolf dogs. I learned about wolf dogs. I read about each one they had. I asked questions and that was just beautiful. They're doing the people there. Like you can tell how much they love the wolf dogs and how much they care for them and how much they advocate for like proper care of wolf dogs and for people to be knowledgeable about wolf dogs before they get wolf dogs. And it was just great. And I love it. And it's also like I, I knew wolf dogs existed, but like I've never seen one in real life and they're massive and different colors and they were just another moment where I was just like, ugh. And then at the end of the day, I actually did get to meet a wolf dog. Like I actually got to like take a selfie one. I got to pet her all like pet her forever. And um, that was one of the enrichment activities. Like you got to meet her. And so I'm glad I stayed the whole day because I did even though I didn't get to do the tour where I get to meet them, I still got to take part in something where I get to meet them. And the enrichment activities, like I got to decorate a Christmas tree with bacon for one of the packs to attack and eat. I got to meet another wolf dog. I got to howl and hear them howl along to us howling. And uh, I can't even remember, but it'll be in the video as well because I, of course, made note of everything. Um, And then I came back that day and I went to go get my second serving of poutine from the Big Cheese Poutinery, I think it's called, Um, which is like a, I guess it's like a chain or it's like the known poutine place. Um, And so I got that and it was delicious. It was like barbecue chicken poutine and (gasps) y'all, poutine is delicious. So good. Absolutely delicious. Um, And then I went to an after that, I was like, mm, I want dessert. And I had found this place called Made by Marcus, which was recommended by a lot of people. And it's an ice, it's like a gourmet, I guess you could say, ice cream place. And I've been to a place like this um, here in Texas that's called Reyes, which when I lived in San Marcos, there was one in San Marcos. And then I discovered there was one in New Braunfels as well. And it's like custom ice cream flavors, like different things. So Made by Marcus is essentially kind of on that same realm of Reyes. Uh, but 
I 100% loved Made by Marcus. I even said it was better than Reyes. And I don't know if it's because I hadn't had Reyes in so long, but it was so good. I had, um, I think I had like a whiskey, uh, praline type flavor. And then I had, uh, the s'mores flavor. Um, and they were so good. Y'all so good. And then I ate the ice cream on my way back. So it was funny because I was eating ice cream in like 30 degree weather, but I wasn't cold from eating. The, I don't know. It was, delicious absolutely delicious um so definitely go there if you're ever in calgary or wherever else they have made by marcus i think it's a calgary thing and then the next day was new year's eve and on new year's eve when i was planning um the things i wanted to do i had wanted to go to a hockey game i've never been to an nhl game i've only ever been to the rampage which isn't part of the nhl and so i was like <gasps> Ooh, and so I had been looking up tickets and they were pretty expensive. But then, thank you, Seat Geek and uh, David Dobrik, because I found a ticket on Seat Geek sitting second row for like 140 bucks, which I was fine with paying that because I paid so much more for the Jonas Brothers and the Jonas Brothers weren't. I was definitely not sitting second row. Um, so that was my validation for buying those tickets. But I found tickets and I bought them because I was like, what other... Th I didn't have anything else planned for New Year's Eve. I knew I wanted to go to Olympic Plaza and sit and like watch the fireworks and do the countdown. But I needed something else to do during the day. And so I bought my ticket and I went to the Calgary Flames hockey game. And that was so much fun. They definitely lost. They went against Chicago, which is like one of the best teams. Um, but it was still fun. Um, so many people. And also my first time ever sitting second row. And the energy ugh, just was great. I had a lot of fun at the hockey game. And then after that, I walked to Olympic Plaza and I bid the new year adieu um or I bid 2019 adieu and said hello to 2020 that's what I meant to say <laughs> uh yeah and that was just fun I had a blast I had bought um a flames like long sleeve shirt the day before so that I could blend in and I really wanted a hockey jersey but those things are hella expensive so I got like a long sleeve t-shirt um and I'm trying to think what else? Um, oh, on New Year's, uh, when I went to Olympic Plaza, I met a mom and her son. They sat next to me while we were waiting for fireworks. And I, that was one of the moments where I was like, I finally like actually struck up the courage to like start a conversation with somebody. And I struck a conversation with her and I was like, are you guys from here? And we talked. And then it was funny because she, her, she had, she was telling me she had friends in town also from Texas. So she was like, <gasps> as soon as she heard I was from Texas, she was like, do you know so-and-so? And I was like, <laughs> no, Texas is a pretty big state. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. But we talked and, um, at the end of the night when we were saying goodbye and like happy new year, she had told me, um, that she was very happy that she got to meet me because she feeds off of people. She feels people's energies and she had felt so comfortable and she said that I had such a welcoming like personality and everything um, that she was very comfortable because she did leave for a little bit to go find food and she left her son with me and she was like, I just felt very comfortable and you were very trustworthy in the minutes that I met you that I felt very comfortable to leave my son with you. And I was like, oh, then again, her son was like a 13, 12 year old. So like he was old, but she, it was so nice to hear from her how like, I radiated that type of aura and like feeling um, and that just made me feel good. I was like, that's a great way for me to feel like starting into the new year in a place where I'm by myself and I don't know, as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, thank you. Like, that's so sweet of you. Um, yeah, and then I went home. I had thought about going like to a bar or something, but I'm just not that type of person. Like, bars are cool, but I, I don't know. I don't like people, <laughs> like crowds of people. They kind of stress me out. And so I didn't do that. Um, and then the next day, January 1st was my last day because I was leaving on the second, but I was leaving at like seven in the morning. So the next day was my last day. And that was just a day where I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to drive around for a little bit. And, um, 
I didn't even mean to go to this place, but it was something that had been recommended and I just stumbled upon it as I was driving around. I had gone to um, Heritage Park, which is some outside of the city, kind of outside of the city, um, like a little suburb of the city. And I had gone and it's another area that kind of overlooks like a lake er lake. And it was another park and it was beautiful. And so I kind of just, I found like a park bench and I sat down in the park bench and I just stared at like the, I stared at the lake. I stared at like everything and I just was at peace and I was so happy at the fact that I made it through this week of me being in a place by myself in another country by myself. And I don't know, I just sat and just reflected on all the things I had done and then after that I went to this place called Regrub which is they're known for like their crazy milkshakes and so I went and I tried a crazy milkshake and there's a funny story behind that if you follow me on Instagram it's on my insta story highlight from Calgary but I tried to do some cool shots with this milkshake and uh, the pieces fell and I got whipped cream all over my pants and all over the chair and it was just craziness um, but it was a fun, it was delicious. I would definitely recommend if you're ever in Calgary, go to Regrub. Their milkshakes are crazy, fun, delicious. Um, they do sell burgers. I don't eat burgers, but I did have like their, um, oh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was like mozzarella sticks. But instead of mozzarella, they use cheddar cheese. So good. And then the sauce that came with it. I don't even know what the sauce was. Delicious. And that was pretty much my full day. I spent the rest of the day packing and like watching movies and then I was ready to go. I woke up at like three in the morning the next day so that I could get back to the airport, rent, turn in the rental car, get on the plane, all that jazz um, and head out to Atlanta. And so I get to the airport the entire time I was in Calgary, it did not snow. All of the snow on the ground was from the last time it had snowed. And by the time I was leaving, everything was already melting. So I nothing, no snow had actually fallen, of course, until I'm sitting inside at the gate waiting to leave when it starts to snow. Y'all, I look out the window at the plane and I see flurries in the lights and then it's a downpour of snow. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I, it, it would, it, it just, it would, everything else worked out perfectly except for the snowfall. It would decide to snow as I'm freaking leaving y'all. It's okay. It's okay. Things happen. I still had fun. Didn't get to like, you know, do the whole stick my tongue out, eat snow falling from the sky thing, but (laughs) I still had fun. But yeah, that was the downer that it started to snow as we were leaving. Um, Yeah, and then I left Canada, and that was the end of my solo trip because then I was flying to Atlanta to visit family uh, for that final weekend before I had to work. And Atlanta was so much fun. Um, I got to go with my, or I got to, excuse me, I went to go hang out with my aunt and my cousin, who I haven't seen in years. And yeah, they took me on an adventure for that weekend. We went to the Georgia Aquarium, which I will always love that place. And I'm definitely going back because uh, I want to go scuba diving in the whale shark um, pool with the mantas and all that stuff. So that's definitely happening sometime. Um, We went to the Coca-Cola Museum, which I didn't know existed. And so we were walking and I was like, what is that? And then we went to the Coca-Cola Museum and that was pretty fun. And then we went to Medieval Times, which I have not been to Medieval Times since I was in eighth grade. And that was an experience because we sat front row and then our night was a beautiful night. And I got his first flower he threw at the crowd and I just was like swoon. I just swooned. That's the, I was just, I had so much fun. My throat hurt so bad after that because of how much I was yelling and shouting. Um, and then I'm trying to think what else we did. Ooh, we got to go behind the scenes at the Georgia Aquarium, which is actually pretty cheap. It was only like 15 bucks per person, which I thought was mind blowing because behind the scenes at all the places I've worked at before are so expensive. And the fact that this one was 15 bucks and I got to go to see a lot behind the scenes. I loved it. And then we, um, 
Well, I guess that is all the big stuff we did, but I did get to hang out with them and I was nice and especially seeing them after a while and them showing me kind of everything in their area. It was nice. I had fun. Um, I'll definitely be back at some point um, to just do it all again, of course, to go back to the Georgia Aquarium, y'all. It's crazy. But that was the end of, yeah, I ended my trip in Atlanta. I flew back on the 5th and then had to be back at work on the 6th. And I just have to say, like, it was... I just, I don't even know the words, but I, I had fun. I had a blast. It was so great to do something by myself for like a whole week and then come back to family for like a weekend and then come back home and like get back to reality. It was a nice escape from reality and all that, or at least my reality. But I saw this post, um, today actually when I was prepping to record this and it was a picture of a quote and it says traveling it leaves you speechless then turns you into a storyteller and that was said by Ibn Battuta I think I don't know I I butchered that name but that quote as soon as I saw that picture of that quote I was like that resonated with me because that is so true like as you, as I mentioned, this whole, that trip to Canada, I was in complete awe and I just would tear up and I was speech, I'm speechless trying to describe to it, trying to describe it, but I was speechless in the moment because I just didn't know how to fully absorb the beauty that I was seeing. But it does turn you into a storyteller because here I am making a whole podcast about my trip and the things I went on and I made a vlog about it, which you'll see eventually. And so, I don't know, that, I just really, that quote just hit me because I was like, oh my gosh, that's how I feel recently. That's like essentially what I did. But yeah, it was great. Um, Now I want to go through and um, answer some of the questions people sent me, which there weren't a lot, so it should go by quickly. Um, But... Let's see here. Excuse me. So I have uh, my first question actually comes from Jasenia at Calypso Cruise, in case you have not followed her after the many episodes she's been on. Um, But she asked, what was a personal challenge you faced during your trip? And I would have to say a personal challenge for me that I faced was just trying to get the courage to I guess approach people or like get engaged into a conversation with somebody else that was wherever I was um that was a personal challenge that I think I failed (laughs) at until like the last day but there were many times like when I was at the bars sitting and eating I mean, I would talk to the bartenders and everything was fine. Like, that's part of their job. They're supposed to spark conversation with you. Um, but in moments, like, where I was doing stuff and I just didn't... Like, what I... The story that I tell, like, my friends when I'm talking about this trip is when I was in the hot springs and I was just at, minding my own business, there were a lot of people in the hot springs and there were so many opportunities where I could have opened up and I could have talked to people, which is how I discovered how I'm really shy because this these two guys like they were far away from me and then all of a sudden they were like right next to me and they were talking about their trip their some of their old trips with like that they've been on and all that stuff and I was listening because they were talking loud enough for me to hear and it was the way I was understanding that was kind of like they were trying to which I mean they may not have been trying to do this but this is how I felt they it felt like they were trying to speak up so that I could join the conversation and stuff like that and I didn't. I didn't join the conversation. In my head, I joined the conversation. I played out an entire conversation with them in my head, but I never said anything out loud, Um, which is why. And I did that two times that evening because there was another group of people standing next to me that I did not try to talk to. And I don't know why that's a thing, but that's what made me realize like, I am a shy person in situations and I mean people say some people say this about me like when I told my mom that story she was like no yeah Eileen you are shy and I was like well this trip really made me realize because I didn't think I was that shy but I would have to say that's a challenge trying to open up 
and the whole reason of this was to like open up but it is my first trip like there is still hesitation in that which is why I want to do more trips like this so that I can learn to open up and engage in conversation with people but that's a challenge yeah I would say I faced because by the end of the trip like that last day when I was talking to that lady like I kind of was doing better at it but then again it was like a mom like it was an older person it wasn't someone my age which you would think I don't know maybe it's also a sense of reje- rejection and like people I don't <laughs> Oop, sorry um I don't know but yeah I would say that was a challenge just me trying to open up more and not necessarily doing it but I did still have so much fun because it's nice solo travel is nice because you don't have to worry about anybody else you don't have to worry about if someone's gonna like what you have planned because it's just you you can leave whenever you want you can stay for however long you want um there were moments where I was like oh I could leave but then I would tell myself like no stay like do this longer like you're here by yourself you're on your own time like there's no rush to do anything else um so that's something I really liked about solo travel and sleeping in was great. Like I didn't have a timeline. I knew I needed to go places before they closed, but I didn't have a timeline of what to do. Um, so yeah. So thank you for that question, Jasenia. Um, this next one that I have, um, is from C James MCR and he put not a question, but can't wait to see where you get to this year. Um, and thanks. I appreciate that. That's so cool. Um, that's so nice of you to, um, just kind of like show your excitement for like what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm already in the plans of trying to figure out what I want to do for my birthday this year. I know it just happened, but you know, I got to know what I want to do so that I can save up and have enough money by the end of the year for it. Um, but I do plan on traveling and I plan on kind of doing better at this whole social media stuff but thank you so much for that I I I love how it's not a question but it's still kind of something that kind of just got me thinking about um and then another question I got was let me pull it up I should have taken a screenshot but I didn't was did you enjoy it will you do it again what was your favorite part and that is from joe arts pr And so I, did I enjoy it? Yes, I had so much fun. Um, I would definitely go there again. I'm saying, will you, yeah, I would definitely do it again. I think though, if I do it again, I would want to go in like the spring or summertime because um, you can hike. There's a lot of trails over there that you can hike in Calgary um, especially in Banff, there's so many trails and you can hike them in the winter, but there's the risk of like avalanches and then snow, how deep it is and all that. And I'm not trying to risk my life on a trip like that. And so I would definitely do it again, but I would go again when it, there's no snow so that I can actually hike and see like the lake when it's not frozen and all that stuff. So for sure there will be a trip years down the line where I make it back. Um, my favorite part I would have to say is my favorite part would actually be my whole birthday, especially the Lake Louise part, because I had been hyping that up so much. And I was that was the part I was most excited for. And then to finally get there and it be what I had seen in pictures and everything. And in reality, the exact same thing, like my expectations were made, were set and they were, I don't even know the words for it, but I was just that was my favorite part, being able to get to Lake Louise and just see the beauty of it. And just, I stared at it so long because I just could not understand how this was real life. Like the fact that I manifested the fact that I was going on a trip and then I manifested the fact that I wanted to go to Lake Louise and then I made it all happen and I was there and I just having that feeling of, holy shit, like I did this, like I paid for this, like I... I planned for this. I knew where I was going. I'm here and now I'm ice skating on a frozen lake. Something I've always wanted to do ever since watching Disney Channel's Ice Princess. Um, I've always wanted to skate on frozen lake and it finally happened. My childhood dreams were fulfilled. And so that's what I would say was my um, favorite part. Thanks. And um, that's my aunt asking that question that I got to see in Atlanta. So thank you so much. And then my next question is well it wasn't a question 
but it was just a heart from Brie.Tolani. And thank you so much for the love and um, support. That's so nice. Um, and then my final question is, when are you coming back? And that is um, from my cousin. <laughs> and I will have to say, I'm coming back when I have the money to come back because I am currently now, um, I did get a credit card for this trip and I'm currently now paying the credit card back from this trip. So when I have money is when I'll be coming back. Um, but I do plan on traveling more. And of course, you, I will be going back to Atlanta for the purposes of visiting them again, but also going to the Georgia Aquarium and scuba diving since I am scuba, scuba certified. Um, but yeah, those are all the questions that I got. And that's pretty much everything from my trip. Uh, thank you guys for listening. I will be, as I said, posting a vlog about that trip, but it won't be coming up anytime soon because I would need to post my San Francisco vlog first because I already put that vlog as number six. And so my brain's like, no, you can't change the number. It has to be San Francisco first. So I'm working on getting the San Francisco vlog finished. I Once I have that finished, which it will be in multiple videos, but I'm going to post each video like quickly so that I can post my Calgary and Atlanta. Well, I think I'm just gonna, I don't know, I'm still figuring out my birthday trip vlog situation, but I'm definitely putting San Francisco first. So if you don't follow me on YouTube or on Facebook, definitely go ahead and find me on those, which they're all linked in the description so that you can stay up to date and get notified when um, those vlogs finally go up because they are fun and I have fun recording them. And I'll have fun sharing my adventures with you guys. But thank you for joining me on episode 23. And yeah, you can listen to where you listen to podcasts. You can, um, excuse me, you can follow me on social media to stay up to date with me when I'm not podcasting. Um, right now I'm posting about these challenges that I'm taking part in. But as soon as I'm done with those challenges, I'll be figuring out my next moves for social media and you can kind of see when those happen. So make sure you're following me, um, like, subscribe, rate to the podcast on whatever you're listening it to. I would love to get your feedback on things you want to hear in the future. 2020, it's a new year, new th ideas. Um, if you want to send me your stories on your adulting on your adulting moments or if you have questions that you want to send in that are just random for me to answer or if you have questions to put into the mug of questions for when I have guests over send those over you can dm me you can email them to me whatever you prefer but yeah thank y'all thank y'all what <laughs> thanks for listening and yeah I will talk to you guys on the next one bye Thank you.